So for the last talk here, I'm going to talk about radiology. Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to have to use that well-worn phrase that this is only going to be the tip of the iceberg, but this is truly one of those cases where this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to give you a little bit of story about uh, the foundations of radiology. One of the first people to get some kind of laws going into radiology was this character called Albert Einstein. Everybody's heard of him. He left the field, rumor has it, because he thought it was too difficult, and went on to develop another area of physics called relativity. <laughs> Turns out rheologists actually got the last laugh. The same mathematics, all the differential analysis on manifolds that Einstein developed for the theory of relativity is actually needed to properly model rheological behavior. So when I say this is the tip of the iceberg, quantitatively, mathematically, yes, it is just the tip of the iceberg. But more than that, too, even from a qualitative point of view, you need that much math in order to be able to model all the world's different subtleties, some of which I'm going to be able to explain today. So truly, this isn't just the tip of the iceberg. There are some things that I hope that you will definitely learn from the talk here today, but I want to give you the idea that there, is a lot of things, there are a lot more things out there that aren't going to be covered today. Hopefully, you can start seeing some of the possibilities and you can come to us because we have more experience with uh, with dealing with this type of stuff and help you with really solving a bunch of problems out there. So, uh, reality is kind of a word, weird word. There aren't too many other words in the English language that are like that. It actually uh, comes from the root root rios, which means flow. And so it is the study of flow and deformation <coughs> and matter. Uh, I like Professor Morrison's <coughs> objective or uh, uh, operational definition a little bit more in that you're interested, it's, reality is a study of stuff that's interesting and unusual as opposed to just everything. Water normally isn't studied because that's not unusual. It has a constant viscosity, a constant temperature, nothing exciting about that. If you're pushing it through a pipe and you double the pressure, you get twice as much stuff coming through. You want, we're more interested in studying unusual stuff that if you double the pressure, you don't get twice as much stuff through. You might get three times as much or you might get half as much through. Things of that nature. Another example of reality is if you think about, if you've ever walked on the, uh, on the beach uh, in the ocean where the tide comes in and out, if you walk up on the real dry sand, it's very soft. If you walk out in, in the area where the, in the water <coughs> is, where the tide is still coming in and out, that sand is soft. But the sand that's in between, where the tide has just gone out from it, is actually very hard. That's another example of unusual behavior that could get a rheologist interested in. So uh, this goes back to, to grade school, it's very simple, and I can spend a lot of time dwelling on it, but there's the three state fundamental states of matter, gas, liquid, and, and our uh, solids. They have, have characteristics, nothing, nothing new here. The thing is, well, as you get more and more advanced in your education, you start to find the line between these materials of the word. Gas and liquids are generally considered fluid. If you take a class in fluid mechanics, you treat gas and liquids liquids more or less equally, only difference being the density between the two. Lines between a solid and a liquid also can be blurred, and that's where you get into this area that's called viscoelasticity, which is some materials show signs of being both solid and liquid at the same time. Classic example of that is the children's toy silly putty. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, sample of it here with me today. But when you, set the, when you first pick up a container of silly putty, and the material's been sitting in there for a long time, you'll notice that it has the shape of the eggshell that it came in. That means it's flowed out to fill it. It has characteristics of a liquid. But if you take the silly putty, roll it into a ball, throw it against the wall, it bounces back. That's characteristics of a solid. So silly putty is a very simple example of a viscoelastic material, something that has a, a solid characteristics and also liquid characteristics. The question is, why are the lines blurry between a solid and a liquid? It has to do with relaxation. That's going to be a big theme driving through all of this, is understanding how materials relax. When you put stress, when you try and deform a material, put stress on a material, it wants to relax that stress out, go to a lower energy level. Gases in most liquids, low viscosity liquids, are able to do this nearly instantly. That's why they show the characteristics that they do. Solids, on the other hand, can take an extremely long time to relax. That's why the buildings that are around us don't fall down quickly at all because it's, it's just taking too long for it. Viscoelastic materials, the stuff that we find interesting, are materials where relaxation happens to occur on a time scale that's fast enough for us to easily observe it. 
gases or liquids and, and gases are able to slip past each other very fast or very easily, and that's why they have quick relaxation times. Polymers and other complex materials have to cooperate. They need help from their neighbor. They just can't go past each other independently. So because of that cooperation, that's why you see a longer relaxation time. That's why you get the rheology behavior that we're interested in. So then it becomes down to a matter of comparative rates. If the rate that the stress is applied is that's faster than the material is able to relax, it's going to appear to be a solid, whereas the opposite case is, is also true, whereas if, relax, if the material is able to relax faster than the stress is being applied to it, then it appears as a liquid. And so that leads to some quality of understanding now of silly putty. Silly putty, when you first open the eggshell, it, was, it had had a long time, it, it was in the eggshell for a long time, it had a time to relax. That's why I was able to flow out and form or match the shape of the eggshell. When you rolled it into a ball and throw it against the wall, it bounces back. It did have time to relax when it was hitting the wall very quickly. The stress rate was too fast for it to relax, and so that's why it acted as a solid. Now this is a qualitative description. We'll go on to put some, uh, some math behind it. Uh, one of the workhorses for rheology is dynamic mechanical analysis. And when the, in this case, what happens is you're, you're putting a sample into the, into the instrument and you apply an oscillatory stress to the sample. And then you make two measurements. You measure the amplitude of the deformation within the sample, but you also measure the phase difference between the applied stress and then the measured deformation. If you have a perfect solid, in your DNA, then you're going to find that the force is proportional to the displacement, just like a spring. So if you have an oscillation, the force is also going to be in phase with the displacement. You imagine this is like the applied force, and this is what you see going on in the sample. They're going up and down together, just like this, perfectly. If you have an ideal liquid, a Newtonian fluid, you find that the force is actually proportional to the rate of the display time. That's the whole viscosity of the metric. So in that case now, the force and the, and the oscillation will be 90 degrees out of phase. Again, more math here and everything like that. But you end up with two parameters out of this. G prime, which is the storage or elastic modulus, gives you your solid characteristics of the material. And G double prime, which is the loss or viscous modulus which describes the lift of the component of the material.